All right, head class, week four lecture. Going to work on skid steer and dingo operations. Uh, I've kind of lumped these two together. <clears throat> um, not that they're similar types of equipment, but they're similar operationally. Um, you know, skid steer is uh, grading, attachments. Uh, dingo is something very similar. A lot of grading, a lot of attachments go on a dingo. So safety measures are the same, operation, operationally, uh, so to speak, they are they are similar in nature. You don't necessarily use a skid steer and a dingo uh, interchangeably. Uh, dingo is kind of on a smaller scale, uh, more residential, uh, more around smaller job sites, those types of things. Skid steers can be on smaller job sites, but they are more for the larger uh, job sites as well. I think it was just uh, not as big, not as um, heavy, uh, those types of things. So you can do a little bit more with a skid steer uh, than you can with a dingo. But a dingo has a purpose, uh, especially on smaller jobs, uh, residential jobs, those types of things uh, when you're loading um, or when you're interchanging attachments um, on each individual piece of equipment. So that's kind of why we have them lumped together. Like I say, not, not, not the same types of equipment, but similar, similar in what you would do things for. Uh, types of jobs that you would do with each one, just different scale of jobs, I guess I would say. So like I say, common activities, multifunctional piece of equipment, both are, both are the same, both for construction sites, both are good for having attachments, uh, augers, front loaders, uh, buckets, those types of things, grading equipment on the front, whether it's a, um, you know, a tiller, uh, you know, a grading, um, a grading blade of some sort, box blade, uh, forklifts for moving things, uh, those types of things. So both both of them are good for that. Uh, skid steer a little more on the larger, grander scale. Larger sites <clears throat> can move a whole lot more work, uh, dirt than than a dingo can. Uh, but dingo very functional for smaller job sites, residential job sites especially with the different attachments that you could put on a dingo. Uh, and also as we get as we get started too, dingo is uh, Toro's brand of a uh, mini loader is what you will see a lot. There's a couple, there's a slides in here a little later on for some Bobcat references. Bobcat is a brand. John Deere is a brand. Our brand is um, the, the brand that we have at, a, at the school is different. There's Case. There's all kinds of different brands. Kubota, go on and on. But a dingo is a small, compact loader, so to speak. Dingo is Toro's brand of what that is. Other brands, like Bobcat, call it something a little bit different. Uh, skid steer, same type of thing. Everybody has a skid steer. Skid steer is the terminology of the type of equipment. You will also hear Bobcat. Because uh, when people think of Bobcat, they think of a skid steer, just kind of an industry thing. Um, so if I say it here, that's kind of what I'm interchanging. Uh, and, and then if you talk to people or see things out in the field as well, that's kind of that's kind of the thing as well. And, and, and if somebody says Bobcat to you and you say, what do you mean by Bobcat? What what kind of piece of equipment? They're not going to look at you crazy either just because somebody that says bobcat could be referring to a, a skid steer but they don't even have a bobcat brand skid steer it's just that that that, that type of thing uh, so so some things that we're consistently trying to do each week types of accidents safe work environments how do we keep each other safe what's your duty as an operator what's your duty as a, a stand buyer those types of things um, uh, that we'll get into kind of kind of my standard weekly uh, lecture material, um, similar same here. So types of accidents, what happens on a with a bobcat or skid steer, and what happens with a with a dingo, mini loaders. Uh, operator can be hit and crushed by the bucket, and crushed in a rollover accident. Can be run over, and you can be pinned in between the arm and the frame. Those are the main ones. Obviously, it's, different things can happen, <clears throat> but those are the main ones. Those are the ones where you get seriously injured, uh, and the ones that you have to be aware of. So safe work practices, safe work practices, trying to help you avoid those uh, injuries, uh, 
follow the manufacturer's operating and service instructions. The, some of the slides in here on the dingo actually come from the manual. So, you know, we've talked about the manual, reading the manual. It's a, um, what we say all the time, right? You know, read the manual, read the manual. Well, um, you know, the dingo manual that we have, I was able to pull offline. I've actually had a link in, in, this, in this lecture for it as well. You can reference it. Um, but it goes through some good things <clears throat> that are real life situations that <clears throat> it actually is in the manual. Um, so that's, it's, it's good to understand that. It's not just read the manual and it's nonsense. There, there are some good things in those manuals uh, and, you, and you need to pay attention to them. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate that when we get to the, the dingo aspect. Uh, so never operate the machine from outside of the cab. We'll get into a, a couple examples that uh, you can turn it on. You can move some things from outside of a skid steer. The dingo you actually stand on, so you're not really much on the outside. It is completely outside, <clears throat> so it's more skid steer related. But, you know, if you were trying to operate that machine from the outside, leaning in, turning it on, turning it off, trying to raise the boom, whatever the case may be, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an accident waiting to happen. Uh, always lower the lift arm before exiting the cab, turn off the engine and set the parking brake. You know, those, those, those we talked about, too, with the, with the tractor. You know, you're not saving yourself any time by not turning, it up, turning that key pushing the start-stop button, whatever the case may be, you're not saving yourself that much time, uh, but you may be saving yourself a, uh, an accident uh, by doing that because as long as that machine is on, there's power to the, the attachments, um, those types of things, and all it takes is a slip, it takes a shirt getting uh, caught, uh, somebody's foot, whatever the case may be. That's why it's called an accident, but at the end of the day, if it's on, those things can happen. If it's off, those things won't happen. Um, and you were just, you're, you're just not saving yourself any time and effort by just not doing that. Um, so yeah, turn the engine off, elevate the loads no higher than necessary. Uh, once you start moving, once you have a load and you raise the boom on a skid steer or the dingo, and you start moving that thing around, the machine around, center of gravity changes differently, right? So when it's down and it's compact to the ground and you're moving it, it's no different than when you are, when you are standing still and you're moving and you're kind of squatted in a position, you know? Um, <clears throat> but if you were to raise something above your head, some weights above your head and trying to turn, you just, you're not quite as stable as you are when everything is closer to your body. Same thing on that machine, right? So the more, uh, the more that you carry a heavy load down, that, that machine is stable, center of gravity is stable. Once you get that thing elevated, it becomes very tipsy, uh, very top heavy, that type of thing. Um, way more risk of overturning it, uh, rolling it over, uh, those types of things. Uh, avoid working below moving elevated loads, and if you must work below an elevated load, uh, try to block it and secure it. Uh, you know, there's there might be a time or two where you do have to work as the boom is raised and you need to do something down here. Uh, once again, kind of going back to the, 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 the key the key aspect and, and turning the engine off, setting the parking brake, you know, it's not that big of a deal to back that machine up, lower the boom, do what you need to do in the front, uh, do what you need to do in that work area, bring your machine back in. Um, it's just, it, it, it's just the, those simple little things that, that help reduce accidents and, and, and help people from getting majorly injured, um, it doesn't take that much more time, right? You're not, you're not saving that much more time. Um, just the, the potential of those accidents is, those accidents are, 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 are there when you do things like that, and it's just, it's just not worth it. And, and always wear your seatbelt. So, you know, we've talked about fatalities before, kind of go through a couple of just statistic aspects. Um, so in 13 years, from 1991 to 2004, there were 30 recorded fatalities. Um, majority of those fatalities occurs from in individuals being hit by the skid steer or pinned in the arm. 16 of the 30 were inflicted from the operator, right? And 14 out of those 16 was from the arms of the machine. So you're inside the machine. <clears throat> 
inside of an inside of skid steer it's hard to look around back up and down it's you know you're in here you're set you're you're locked in so to speak that doesn't still mean that you can't get injured even killed from the inside because a lot of what happens is is things come inside that cab and you can't move right so you 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 being careless on a, on a load lifting up a load tilting the load back overloading it whatever the case may be that load comes back in on you you can't move you're you're, you're locked in so a lot of that is is part of that aspect it's just something to think about on a dingo you you are standing on it or you're standing behind it because uh, you're not standing you're not standing on the platform there so you can operate that dingo in both of those aspects you have a greater chance of jumping off getting out of the way whatever the case is that's kind of an ideal situation and on, a, on the skid steer you can't you don't have that choice you are locked in there um, you know you are you were at the mercy of that machine that machine is way more powerful than you are way bigger than you are you will not be able to manhandle that machine that machine will back over a person and won't even know what it did um, so you know we'll, we mentioned that as well um, in the next slide it just you know you have to be aware of your surroundings um, whether you're operating it whether you're on the outside of that machine so a couple of accidents uh, 1991 an employee was attempting to remove the dirt scoop from the Bobcat earth mover while he was still sitting in the machine the employee unbuckled a seatbelt then leaned forward to release his levers uh, and his foot struck the bucket release pedal and lowered and crushed it so you know kind of like what we just talked about it doesn't save you that much time not to turn that machine off do what you need to do get back in it turn it back on right when you when that machine is on the power is still to that machine doesn't matter if you set the parking brake you can easily get your shirt caught you can easily have a slip of the hand whatever the case may be that that parking brake will be released and, and then all it takes is that parking brake to be released you not set it properly whatever the case is and that machine will crush you hurt you very easily it's not a it's not a machine that you can overpower um, the second one there <clears throat> an employee was working on the pavement crew bent down next to the dump truck while bent down uh, the bobcat skid steer backed up and crushed the employee um, in the, you know in between the dump truck and the in the in the skid steer so you know once again when you are on the outside um, of that machine and you're not operating it you're the bystander you're the you're the helper you're the ground man whatever you want to call it you you, you do your due diligence you know make sure your operator knows where he where you are um, you know it doesn't matter how good of an operator it is doesn't matter how long you guys have worked together doesn't matter how much you trust him it's not that he's maliciously trying to do anything uh, but you know you, you can't see that well in, in in a bobcat in a skid steer around the back of you you know we just we just did trailers <clears throat> you know and I, I joked about cheating right you could you could turn around in that pickup truck and turn it around the back um, in the back window and look behind you and you can kind of somewhat cheat you know the reality is is that you won't always have a vehicle that you can turn around and look in the rear view mirror or in the rear uh, was it, rear window um, right and see back there uh, dump trucks don't have those you know it's a it's it's a bed back there it's a dump bed so there is no window behind you you can't turn around you have to use your mirrors skid steer is the same way there, there there might not be a window back there and if there is a window or a piece of glass or whatever the case is you're awkwardly in there you can't see what it is so you know you as the ground guy you as the helper let that person know you know hey I'm going in the front I'm going to shovel. Hey, I'm going to be over here. And then when you come back, let them know where you're at. Let them know you're there. Just have that communication. It's 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 only going to help you on, on job sites. Job sites are noisy. They're loud. Uh, things happen. So accident prevention. You know, what can you do as an operator? What can you do as a surrounding worker, right? So as an operator, you have safety procedures. Your signs, electronic de deterrents are all in place on the skid steer for operational safety. Um, you know the operator should be trained and made aware of these dangers uh, and ultimately makes the choice right so you know you as an operator you, you can easily tell your grounds people you're right you can tell them hey look I mean uh, when I'm on here I can't hear you know the equipment's loud just wave at me make sure you make sure I know where you're at you know um, it's your duty that you know how to operate that piece of machinery right read your manual 
Um, you know, I'll, sh I'll show you once again on the dingo manual. There are some good things in that dingo manual. Uh, you know, and, and every piece of equipment has one, uh, has a manual, and to just take the time to read it. It's, it, it's, it's only helpful. It's only helpful. You don't have to read it from cover, from front cover to back cover. You know, you don't have to spend six days reading something like that. But to be able to flip through, pick up, pick up the major points of what those, what that piece of equipment is. No matter if you're a skilled operator or an unskilled operator, first-time operator, long-time operator, be, be familiar with those types of things. Surrounding workers, what are your responsibilities, right? Make sure your surrounding workers are aware of the dangers of working near loud, powerful equipment. Like I just said, you know, the operator can't hear very well while he's in there. He's a, he's on that machine. He's on that engine. Um, so, you know, make sure he knows where you went, uh, where you're going, when you come back, those types of things. Um, fo following up, right? The, the, it, surrounding employees should always assume that the operator d d does not see them. Um, you know, once you get moving on a piece of equipment and into a groove, so to speak, right, you know, you're concentrating on what you're doing. Um, you know, you, you're, you, you guys have to work together, the guy on the machine and the guys on the outside of the machine, to, to complete a job, you know, but at the same time, being able to understand where each other is at and what, what the role is of each, of each person is, is, is important. So having that communication is, is extremely important for your safety. Use, use caution when you're walking behind or on the side, um, and the workers must assume the responsibility to stay out of harm's way. So I got a couple of lessons here, pulled these lessons out, um, <clears throat> just, some, just some general things to go through um, to try to hit uh, some, some, some major topics of, of both of these things. Uh, so safety, you know, safety lesson one, right? What, what is, take control of your own safety. What are the greatest dangers? Uh, being crushed by moving parts, rollover accidents. Right? We, we, we've talked about that. So what do you, what can you do to help yourself? Learn everything you can, right? Learn, learn not just out of the manual, but learn everything that you can. Um, you know, walk around that vehicle, get to know it, get to, you know, before you operate it, do a pre-inspection. Um, we'll get to that portion too. Uh, concentrate on working safely. Make sure you, you know, you talk, talk to the guys that you're working with and around, right? Hey, um, uh, reiterate that thing. Hey, if y'all if y'all leave, you know, tell me where you're going or whatever the case is. Just let me know when you're around. You know, make sure I make sure I see you. Those types of things. Um, and any additional precautions, right? What what are some of that? Just don't, don't operate the machinery if you're tired. Th those types of things. You know, just you know, being being smart about what it is because these machines are large. They're powerful. They don't. That you will not win. Um, they will not know that, that that is your leg caught in it. Whatever the case may be, it's just they are very powerful. <clears throat> so you as you know you as the operator, right? You have um, you know some safety symbols. You'll see uh, these are um, fairly universal on pieces of equipment. Um, you know burning burning hazards, uh, keeping your hands out of moving parts, um, high pressure fluids. Uh, equipment can drop on you and crush you and avoid getting con. Uh, cotton, some of the rotating parts, right? So these are these are fairly universal. You'll see on different types of equipment, um, but just know what they are, right? Know what this machine is capable of doing. Know some of those, um, you know, cautionary uh, symbols that um, that you need to be aware of. You know, we've always we we all we've all learned. I think in the past, you know, there's caution, warning, and danger. Three different levels, right? Caution being the low level, warning being the medium level, danger being the high level. Uh, you know, that's on the pesticide aspects too, right? So, you know, caution ends, you know, what, hearing protection, you know, that's a, a small level safety measure. Uh, warning, you know, a little more serious, uh, follow the directions in, on the sign, so you, or you could be badly hurt, right? So, falling equipment, falling off the equipment, those types of things, and then the danger. You know, you can be crushed in there and you can be, you know, you can be killed, those types of things. So just the different levels of safety aspects that come along with each uh, piece of equipment and your responsibility as, as an operator. Um, safety lesson two, you know, prepare prepare for a safe operation, right? Do a, do a pre-op inspection. Um, you know, check the tires, check the cab, take, check the seat belt, um, check the grab handles, check the lights, check to see if anything's leaking. Um, start it up, you know, move, move, you know, jerk it around just a little bit. Make sure everything feels okay before you kind of get, 
kind of get going, that type of thing. Uh, it's just a good practice to be in. It's not that you're the mechanic aspect of it. You don't have to know what's leaking uh, to know something is leaking. You don't have to know how to fix whatever belt may be broken in order to know that a belt is broken. It's that, it's, it's that aspect, right? Just being able to walk around, um, know that your, your tire is flat, to know that your bucket is not on here right, to know this little cylinder here has got some fluid leaking out of it. Is that right? Is it not right? Whatever that case is, <clears throat> you don't have to be the mechanic to know that, but you can, you can visually look at that and, and understand that something might be wrong and you need to look at that before you continually operate it. Um, safe startup practices, um, <clears throat> safe shutdown operations as well, right? Parking on a level surface, lowering the boom, um, turning the engine off, setting the parking brake, you know, those types of things. Uh, so I got a little video that I found. It's pretty helpful. Uh, we'll watch this uh, video, and, and it kind of goes through um, a pre-operation a pre inspection. This is a certain piece of equipment. I think it's a case. Um, they're all similar on that aspect, whether you're looking for the pins, you're looking for the connection points, the hydraulics, the cylinders, those types of things. But this was a pretty good video, I thought, that um, just tries to give you a rundown of what, uh, what, what to look for before you get in. And once again, he kind of says the same thing again. You don't have to be the mechanic to understand that something is wrong. Um, you just need to be able to have the, the wherewithal to look at it, and that's your, and that's your due diligence as, a, as an operator. So we'll look at this together. Um, like I say, pretty good, pretty good video here.
earth itself. And when I come around, I'm looking inside here where all the connections are. Come around, I'm looking. We'll do a lot of times damage uh, to have it made to bring everything up and get it to bring the objects there. And then the pins around back there. So even though he's talking about a skid steer, you know, this is a pre-op inspection that you could do on any piece of equipment, right? I mean, tractor, lawnmower, dingo, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. I mean, it's, um, I think he's doing a lot of good, showing a lot of good aspects of, of, of what we're looking, of what you're looking for, what we're looking for when you're, when you're doing a, a, a pre-op inspection. I think that's pretty good there. Um, you know, a couple things, <clears throat> right? I mean, we, we, we just we just spoke about a bunch of those things, but you know, the back end of that skid steer where the engine compartment is, um, they're very similar depending on what brand. Um, they're all usually one or two um, latches that you can open up and see, you know, radiator. That's where you put your fuel 90% of the time, um, you know, 
and, and you just can see different uh, different belts, uh, air filter, that type of thing. It's usually where you're going to check your oil. Um, you know that. So so that's pretty similar. That's not um, uncommon for a skid steer on where that engine compartment is located. And you can just open that up to just see, like he says, you know, check the radiator. Not that you're the mechanic aspect of the radiator. Just is it clean? Is it is it dirty? Can you can you can you blow it off? Um, can you pull some leaves out of it? Whatever the case is, to just make that um, make that a little bit better. Uh, so lesson number three: uh, Don't get crushed by moving parts. Moving parts can crush you. So you know how do you avoid being moving? How do you avoid being crushed? You know, never enter or exit under a raised attachment. What we talked about earlier is not saving you that much time uh, to have somebody working under your boom that's that's raised up. Back up, lower the boom, do your work, bring back. You need to have your boom high again to dump something. Do it on that aspect. And just not saving yourself any time. Um, by not by not taking that extra precautionary step, um, never start the engine uh, on the outside. Once again, you can slip. You can do those things. We've mentioned that before. Um, you can read through a couple of these other ones. Um, it, it is as your time allots um, through throughout the course of the week. Uh, never worked under the raised attachment. Um, whenever possible, perform maintenance work um, when the engine is off. You know, similar. Some of the things that we've already discussed. Prevent rollover accidents. Um, how do you how do you prevent those rollover accidents, right? So little little reminder here. There's a don't overload the attachment. The Dingo, what I mentioned earlier, the Dingo uh, manual actually has a rollover slope um, uh, chart in it, uh, which I thought was very interesting. It is in the slides here coming up. Um, but when you when you put an attachment on there, it changes the center of gravity on that machine. So, you know, if you're on a hill, if you're on a slope, whatever the case may be, um, you know, you have to make sure that you are on the proper slope for the weight of that machine, the weight of that attachment, how you back up that slope, or how you get up that slope, whether you can go straight up, whether you back up, whatever the case may be. That's actually in the Dingo manual. Um, so it's not it's not something that it's just said or talked about. Um, that is actually a, a a fact. They actually do they do the research on on those things. Uh, just like you know, a car manufacturer is going to do the research on safety, safety bags, rollover, you know, rollover, side packing collisions, front collisions, rear collisions. <clears throat> you know, these these equipment manufacturers are doing the the safety uh, research on you know what what slope. What angle of a slope can you back up this safely with this particular attachment on it? Um, you know, so th you know those are things you have to pay attention to. They're done for a reason. They do the research for a reason, and that reason is to keep you safe. Um, because you you do get on a job site, you do get in a lot of different types of um, environments, right? I mean, you do get in some situations where you know you have to think about that. Doesn't matter how good of an operator you are, or, or how new you are. You know, you just you need to be aware of those things. Um, you know, just reading through some of these things, just, you know, you can read through all these. I'm not going to bore you with, you know, going through these highlights, but they are in here for your, uh, for your reference. A couple other, uh, operational hazards, right? Um, stay away from obstacles, steer clear of run over accidents, right? You know, wear your safety belt, um, drive forward when you're on level ground, unless the load, um, blocks your view, right? So, you know, something to think about too. Picture down there at the bottom, you know, if that, um, as you're, as you're driving in there and you got a load in front of you and it's raised up to not let it drag on the ground, you know, how do you, how are you seeing where you're going in the front, right? Those are things that you need to, you need to pay attention um, about, you know, you need to have somebody there to help you. Um, beware of undercutting, right? Undercutting, if you're digging in a pile of dirt and you're, and you're getting the, the bottom layer and the first layer that you get to with that with that loader, um, and you kind of create a, a cavity on the bottom end. Eventually, that that mound on the top is gonna gonna fold down. Well, if you get in there with your machine, and that happens to be when that dirt mound falls in, it's gonna fall in on you on the cab, right? So, you know, you you're in there on that cab. 
you, you can't move, you can't get go anywhere. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a prime example of, of, of you know how to get how, how you can get hurt. Um, so you know, there's hydraulic fluids that's under high pressure. They're under high pressure. It's hot. Um, you know, carbon monoxide. We talked about that prior to. Uh, you know, don't don't start these machines and leave them running in closed spaces. Um, electrocution um, and prevent an accident near, near traffic. Right. You know, these these machines are not uh, road safe. Right. You know, I mean it. Skid steer uh, looks like a big bad machine. Same thing with a tractor, right, going down the road. But I mean, at the end of the day, they're not they're not geared towards road safety. Uh, you may win one time, but you know the reality is, is it's not built for the safety of the road. So you know don't 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 think just because you're in there, you're either on a large tractor, you're in a skid steer, and that thing feels really solid that you're safe. You know, worked at the university and. Um, one of the gentlemen was driving the skid steer down one of the campus roads and somebody rear-ended him and hurt him pretty bad. Um, you know, in all honesty, didn't do a lot of damage to the machine, you know, but it, when, when they, when he stopped and they didn't stop and they hit him, you know, it did a lot of damage for his back. Um, you know, he was out of, he was out of work for a while. So, you know, those are, those are the things that can happen. So you just have to, you have to be aware. So this is kind of a reference. Um, got the, it's a it's a skid steer. It's from Bobcat. Um, I'm not going to watch it with you. You can you can watch it on your own. But just kind of a reference for a good a good safety thing. Some things that he kind of goes over. Um, it's it's good. There's other videos down here that you can kind of thumb through as well. Uh, we all know YouTube's got all kinds of stuff. But a good good reference point. This is Bobcat. Like I said, Bobcat's a brand. They have some you know they have different equipment that they they operate, but they have some good safety things. Um, so the Dingo 323 is actually our Dingo at the school. Um, you know, it is a little stand-on uh, machine. You stand on the back. You operate the controls as you stand there. Uh, you know, some uh, operational things. I've highlighted a couple of them. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, don't leave don't leave the don't leave it running when the traction you know, un unattended. Um, you know. Lower the arm, stop the engine, remove the key before you dismount, set the parking brake. Don't carry a load with the arms raised. You know, the one thing about the dingo is, you know, you're standing behind it or you're standing on it. Um, you know, when you get a load and that thing is up in the air and you have weight on it, you're standing on that thing and it's rocking back and forth. Um, and you're trying to hold the controls all at the same time. So it can get a little tricky. Don't put yourself in a bad spot. Um, you know, it's easy to do on a dingo, you know, so just you, you got to be mindful of that. Same thing, right? Don't jerk the controls. You know, if you're getting into a bad spot and you're trying to hold on or you tilt or you jerk, you know, that, that machine does it, you know, you're you're hit, you're holding those controls all at the same time, too. So are you at, you're, at, <clears throat> you're more apt to, you know, get a little trigger happy finger or whatever you want to call it, but then again, you know, you got to try to balance on that thing too. So, I mean, you're standing on it. So, you know, be, be careful, be slow, um, be, be thoughtful in, in what you're doing and what those machines are, are capable of doing. Um, operate up and down the slopes with the heavy ends of the traction up the hill. Um, you know, we'll get to the slope aspect that I was re referring to um, earlier. You know, Dingo in their manual has you know, different slopes and different attachments um, that you can go on a certain type of slope. And it, and it tells you and it details that out for you. Um, so it's, you know, it's, 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 not, um, it's not just talked about, right? I mean, it's, 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 this is reality and, and what I was saying earlier. They do the research. They do the testing. Um, so, you know, l listen to it. Pay attention to it. Uh, a couple things here. Just read through those as you as you go through the lecture. Um, never tamper with the safety devices. Um, you know, clean clean the unit, basically. You know, keep it free of the grass and leaves. You know, a couple things. You know, the biggest thing that you're going to see um, out there for, for tampering with safety is, is seat belt, right? You know, a lot of a lot of things that you can, uh, you got to have the seat belt on to start it or you got to have the seat belt on to operate it, whatever the case is. It's a safety mechanism. You can cut it off. You can um, you can dismantle it, whatever the case is. Don't do it. You know, it's not, it's not worth it. Um, you know, I have seen uh, machines that are dirty 
I have seen machines when it is leaf season get clogged up. They are hot. Those, those engines are hot. They run hot. Uh, fluids on the outside are hot. A dry leaf <coughs> can start a fire. Um, you know, so keep them, keep them clean. You know, take, take care of them. Uh, those, are, those, are, those are things that happen. This was kind of the, this is the um, slope thing that I was mentioning. This is in, the, this is in their manual. Um, you know, and it just shows you what a 5%, 10%, 15% slope is. It's not a lot, you know, it's not a lot. Um, so, you know, you know, when you're thinking of a job site, a job site can easily have a slope more than that. 45, 45 degree angle on a job site is not uncommon. Um, so those slopes are not a lot. And when you think about a not a lot of slope with the stability data that they give you, right? I mean, if you're going up a hill, you know, they, without an attachment, you know, they're saying don't go up more than a 10% slope, right? I mean, that's, it's not safe. That's not a lot. That's not a big hill. Um, you know, and if you're thinking about this, this dingo, um, this, this loader, right, you're standing on the back of that thing. So when it falls backwards, what, I mean, who's, that's you. So you, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. Um, but like I say, to me, it's not memorizing this data. It's not, you know, showing you, you know, hey, if you get an attachment, you need to pay attention to this. Uh, you need to go out there to the job site and figure out what slope it is and know that you can't use that attachment. It's not that aspect. It's that it's the aspect of they've done research here. Um, they're putting this in a manual and telling you that it is not safe to operate out of these parameters. And you just, you need to be familiar and understand that those parameters are not a lot. Um, you know those those angles are not are not that great. They are very slight from what you will see on a job site. So you just have to be very cautious when you're operating these things. Uh, maintenance record here in the manual. You know when do you change out oil? When do you clean filters? Um, you know all this type of stuff in the manual. Uh, good information to have. Uh, the more you maintain, the more you keep. Uh, the service up on anything, whether it's your car, whether it's a dingo, uh, you know, any of the equipment, I mean, you hope that it lasts longer. Uh, so, you know, pay attention to what they recommend and, and, and do that so it does stay. Uh, so once again, all these slides were from the manual. The manual, I mean, I put a link here for the manual. Um, you know, you can run through this manual. Uh, it, is, it is there. Uh, you know, feel free to take a look as your reference. You know, it's good to it's good to have. I uh, did another dingo safety. This is from Bobcat. Um, so I'm not going to look at again. Look at these again. But you know, the, the, a link take at your at your leisure. Take a look, right? I mean, so mini track loader is what they call their dingo, right? It's a Bobcat. Um, you know, this is this is similar type stuff, right? I mean. You know, be, be safe. Um, you know, these Bobcat does all these things, right? Bobcat Toro, they have these they have these videos. You know, when you're operating these equipment, that this type of equipment, that, that that informational, instructional stuff is out there. Just just take a look. You know, find it. Um, take the time to be be familiar with what your stuff is. So it's just a good good resource uh, for what for what's out there. Whether you use it during this class or you, you know, refer to it back, um, you know, at a later date, you know, it's good, it's good to have. So, a couple of other videos that we will will watch, so short short ones. Um, like I mentioned in the tractor one, I will try to find a, a a video of our equipment that we have at the co at the college. Uh, so when you get out to the lab, that you've seen it. Um, it doesn't. I mean, we'll we'll go through the operations. We'll we'll allow you to ride it. You know all that type of stuff. But just to get familiar with what you'll see when you get there on the, on lab day, um, just so you're not completely um, unaware of kind of the equipment that we have. But this is our skid steer. Um, you know, this has that the, the back engine compartment will lift up. Uh, you'll be able to look through there. Um, you know, for a pre-inspection routine, but this is this is our guy.
the demonstration we'll, we'll do our own demonstrations um, <clears throat> here's the dingo kind of off their website kind of shows you what it can does and the different attachments that type of thing But just get you familiar with what's going to be out there, right? It's a stand-on unit. Hand controls are here. You're trying to hold on, um, balance yourself, and you control it here while you're standing on the back of it. Or you're standing on the ground. So some are better. Some are, some are a little different to where they'll have like a platform that can fold up a lot easier. Ours doesn't. Ours is more of the stand-on unit. Um, so just be familiar. Just, just, just trying to show you what the... Different ones are and whatnot, but um, you know, we'll use ours when we get out there. Discussion questions this week. Um, you know, describe the describe the tasks of the describe the types of landscaping tasks you would be comfortable completing with a skid steer versus a tractor. Um, you know, and why? So, for example, you know, you would much rather use a skid steer to do what, um, and you would much rather use a tractor to do what. Uh, just trying to get your mind thinking on what. What you would like to use a tractor for? Some things are interchangeable. Some things, some things aren't. Right? Uh, you can't plow a field with a skid steer. Uh, you know, just those types of things. So, you know, what, what would you, what do you like to use a tractor for? What do you think is best for a tractor? What do you think is best for a skid steer? Uh, those types of things. Um, so, you know, make your initial response and then respond to a couple of your classmates, and we will see you guys at lab, and we will do some. Different things with our skid steer and our dingo. Um, we still have some dirt piles, as you will see, for tractor lab. Um, we'll still be able to do that. We might fill in a ditch. Um, so they've got a couple little things that we can do to kind of get you used to uh, get used to the machines. Um, we can do some road grading, some things along that line. So we'll get you we'll get you accustomed to the equipment. Um, be good uh, be good to learn. Thank you for this week, and we will see you during lab.